Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. U.S. naval vessels are often tasked with spending months at a time at sea. During these extended periods, the Navy needs to utilize some creative methods in order to keep the crews fed and the ships armed and fueled. One of the oldest and most effective resupplying techniques is the airdrop. As the name implies, an airdrop is an airlift operation in which weapons, equipment, humanitarian aid, and even information are delivered via aircraft. The primary difference between a normal supply delivery and an airdrop is that the aircraft does not stop, but instead delivers pallets or packages by pushing them out of the cargo bay or hatch. The supplies can then be collected by the ship or submarine operating in the vicinity. In the case of submarines, airdrops are particularly essential. After all, these stealthy underwater vehicles lack a deck or other large platform upon which to receive deliveries. They are also typically tasked with covert missions in potentially unfriendly waters. This means that the time they spend on the surface, fully exposed, should be kept to a minimum. At sea, airdrop packages are typically designed to be waterproof and to float upon hitting the water. The use of self-deploying parachutes ensures the pallets of supplies enter the water gently, preventing them from being damaged by the impact. In cases where an at-sea airdrop might occur in hazardous conditions, such as extreme cold or ice, extra precautions will be taken to insulate the packages from the elements. The U.S. Navy invests a lot of time and energy into practicing underway replenishments, including those that involve submarines. In this video, naval commanders explore new methods of airdropping, including using unmanned aerial drones. When piloted remotely, these vehicles can deposit a small pilot directly onto the surface of the submarine's hull. Larger scale replenishments can use helicopters, which are also capable of doing precision drops like this. As is the V-22 Osprey, a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft used extensively for resupply and transport missions. Airdrops are by no means the only method of underway replenishment utilized by the U.S. Navy. In fact, ship-to-ship -ship replenishment is more common and allows for the exchange of much greater amounts of supplies. It also allows for fuel to be transferred from specialized tanker ships into the tanks of another vessel. Despite being a relatively age-old transferring method, ship-to-ship -ship underway replenishment is a rather simple process. First, the two vessels maneuver next to one another. Second, one or more cables are attached between the two decks. 
Using a series of heavy lifting dollies, ammunition, food, and other vital provisions can be passed from supply ship to the receiving vessel. At the same time, trash and other waste can be sent back for proper disposal. Fuel transfer is accomplished in a similar way. Crew members will stretch a fuel line between the two boats using the transfer cables. Once in place, the fuel can simply be pumped from one ship to another. There are cases where ship-to-ship -ship underway replenishment is not feasible. When this happens, vertical replenishment is often the go-to solution. This involves using helicopters and sometimes drones to move supplies back and forth. The helicopters will typically make use of a cargo hook and cargo netting to speed up the process. Once the net is filled, the helicopter can carry it to the destination ship and drop it off in just a few seconds. It can then make its way back to the supply vessel, or mainland, to retrieve another net of supplies. Though it seems simple enough, vertical replenishment requires a lot of coordination between pilots and deck crews on both sides of the delivery. Here you can see the USS Bonham Richard, an amphibious assault ship, receiving munitions and other supplies with the help of Helicopter Sea Combat Squadron 25. The Bonham Richard is one of the most famous naval vessels in recent history, if not for the best of reasons. Launched in 1997, the ship was a WASP-class amphibious assault vessel. It was specifically designed to deploy Marine Corps landing forces from sea to land. While also providing air support via its small flight deck, Over the years, the Bonham Richard saw numerous deployments, including during Operation Southern Watch, Operation Enduring Freedom, and Operation Iraqi Freedom. It also served in several humanitarian capacities after the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake and the Indonesian tsunami of 2005. Between those missions, the ship's crew participated in various training scenarios. Despite its 20-plus years of service, the Bonham Richard is perhaps best known as the site of a catastrophic accident that led to the ship's subsequent decommissioning. On July 12th of 2020, witnesses reported an explosion aboard the ship while it was docked at Naval Base San Diego. As the ship was currently undergoing maintenance, onboard fire extinguishers were not functioning. This, combined with large supplies of fuel and hazardous materials stored near the site of the explosion, allowed it to spread through the ship very quickly. 
Fortunately, there were only minor injuries to crew members and civilians, but it took a total of five days for the fires to be completely extinguished. It was ultimately determined that the ship had sustained too much water and fire damage to be repaired. On November 30th, the Navy decided to strip the vessel for components and parts before selling it for scrap. During the investigation into the USS Bonham Richard fire, the Navy took a closer look at ship design, safety precautions, and various other factors that contributed to the incident. In the future, these results may change how firefighting crews work and train aboard naval vessels. Currently, all ships have a crew of first responders on board. These individuals are specifically tasked with handling emergency situations as well as repairing, maintaining, and preserving valuable components aboard the ship. Like firefighters on land, these men and women train regularly for a vast array of scenarios, often working through realistic drills involving real fire and extinguishers. That said, all members of a ship's personnel are trained in basic firefighting techniques. After all, in the event of an incident at sea, time is the most important factor in saving lives and equipment. The Navy pride itself on being a self-sufficient branch of the U.S. military. Its ships are often tasked with staying afloat for months without coming ashore. That's why underway replenishment is so important, as is the crew's ability to deal with problems like fires on their own. Even when moving in a strike group, ships must operate with maximum efficiency in order to complete their mission. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.